It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and while we wait for the lights to get on, let me tell you what's coming up next. Uh, on deck tonight, as we go back to our fancy screen here, big news. Uh, the healthcare system looks like it's back on for uh, uninsured folks. A suicide is averted in downtown. We'll talk more about that. And the concrete quilt, some very cool footage of that. All that and more, and remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, so if you've got the time, stick with us here on 545 Live. I know there will be a lot of discussion today about the politics of all this, about who won and who lost. That's how these things tend to be viewed here in Washington. But that discussion completely misses the point. Whatever the politics, today's decision was a victory for people all over this country whose lives will be more secure because of this law and the Supreme Court's decision to uphold it. Welcome back to this June 29th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. We'll jump right into it here. Uh, well, even with a massive forest fire raging across Colorado, destroying over 300 homes, and Bernie, Manoff, Bernie Madoff's brother admitting to compliance in the greatest Ponzi scheme of all time, the biggest news around the world yesterday was the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling upholding the highly controversial Affordable Care Act. Prompting those comments we just saw from the president, courtesy of the White House's official YouTube channel, and uh, will likely pave the way for Vermont to become the first state to enact a single-payer health care system. Um, and on that, that note, here's our uh, state's commander-in-chief, Governor Shumlin, with his thoughts on that ruling. This decision by the Supreme Court will allow the health care bill to give Vermont some of the resources that we need to bring about a thoughtful single-payer system in this state. All right, uh, and with that, we'll move on to our uh, next uh, politician with uh, his look at it. Senator Sanders was quick to put his spin on the decision as well, breaking down just what that means for Vermonters. If you have a pre-existing condition, your insurance company's not going to throw you off of it. If you have a kid under 26, that kid is going to be able to stay with your health insurance program. If you're a woman, you're not going to be forced to pay higher prices for your health insurance than men. If you're a senior citizen, you're going to see lower costs via prescription drugs. In terms of Vermont, what this means is that as we fight to go forward for a comprehensive, universal health care, guaranteeing health care to every man, woman, and child as a right, it means we're going to receive substantial sums of federal support. And that is a good thing. And you can see uh, his contact up on the screen there, uh, info for his office um, and his uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter feed, which is how we stay in touch with both uh, Governor Shumlin and Bernie Sanders. His YouTube channel is Senator Sanders, all one word. If you'd like to subscribe and get that fabulous HD video uh, that we put up there for you as well. Crank up my microphone here. I do like to hear my own voice. All right, we'll uh, keep this story going. Well, we at 545 Live have no access to Mitt Romney's official video at this time, his response to the Supreme Court's ruling. Um, the presidential contender was quoted in the Associate Press as saying, if you want to get rid of Obamacare, you have to get rid of Obama. Uh, and with that, we'll jump right into our Reformer Roundup, sum up uh, what's going on in Brattleboro's uh, classic newspaper here. And I'll jump right into the stories, and because I'm without my co-captain, Joe Bushy, I get the duty of trying not only to read the stories, but also make sure that the appropriate uh, little thing, there we go, over my shoulder is going, shimmering over my shoulder as well. All right, earlier this week, the D.C. Court of Appeals cited against the Vermont De uh, Department of Public Service and the New England Coalition, who took the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to court over the lack of water quality certificates in the NRC's 20-year license extension for Vernon... Uh, Vernon's Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant, citing the ample time the state had to file their complaint prior to the license being issued. And the Brattleboro Retreat has officially filed a proposal that would address deficiencies in Medicare compliance on their part after a visit from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services prompted Branch Chief Richard Shaw to write to the retreat, quote, the deficiencies have been determined to be of such a serious nature as to substantially limit the hospital's capacity to provide adequate care. 
Uh, and to close out our Reformer Roundup for tonight, Brat PD officer John Giffis managed to talk down an unidentified man who Wednesday afternoon was threatening suicide after climbing the Hinsdale Bridge in Brattleboro, forcing the closure of that bridge and Route uh, 119 for several hours. That's our Reformer report. Of course, just a, a sample of uh, those stories. If you want more than just the one sentence summary, you're going to have to check out reformer.com or brattlebrewreformer.com. But you don't even need the Brattlebrew. They've got reformer.com all to themselves. They've also got a smartphone app. And of course, I think uh, for them, the, the real prize they'd like to see from you is to pick up some real papers from real rainforest uh, for yourselves, either on a newsstand or by getting a subscription. And you get to see all the details on those stories uh, in all their glory. All right. Next, last Sunday, the select board's Ken Schneck convened members of the community to transform a section of the concrete wall in the High Grove parking lot in downtown Brattleboro behind the Main Street Post Office into a community mural. The concrete quilt serves as a reminder to the community that HIV and AIDS remain a public health concern. The project, initiated by Schneck, who hosts the radio program This Show is So Gay and serves on the local Pride Committee, engaged numerous members of the community who showed up ready to paint a 3 by 6 panel, foot panel representing their connection to the cause. Proceeds raised from the initiative benefit of the AIDS Project of Southern Vermont, whose offices and men's program gathering space is located across the street from the mural at 15 Grove Street. For more information uh, about the AIDS Project of Southern Vermont, you can visit their website, aidsprojectsouthernvermont, all one word, dot org, or call uh, the ever easy to remember 802-254-4444. Thanks uh, to Nancy Stefanik. Uh, who's been involved with BCTV for quite some time now. She put together that segment. She's been doing a lot of work for the AIDS Project, video work uh, in conjunction with BCTV, but she's uh, jumped into the seat as a 545 Live content specialist as well, uh, really helping us out. Uh, in addition, Catherine Turnis, longtime occasional 545 Live content specialist, uh, was on the scene to get more footage of the concrete quilt as it went up and get interviews as well. Let's take a look. AIDS has no discrimination. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, AIDS and to support the law. All right, and we'll move on uh, in the script here. The Safe and Green campaign continues its alliance with the Sage Alliance as they gear up for the latest protest against Vermont Yankee this Sunday. For more on the rally, they're billing as a date with Destiny members of the respective groups. Uh, donned costumes, brought choreography and song to the event's video promotion. We've got uh, that clip as well. Live well, safe, clean, renewable. Come support Vermont and declare your independence from energy on Sunday, July 1st, a 10 a.m. rally at the Brattleboro Common in Brattleboro, Vermont. At 11 a.m. we'll be bicycling and busing to Vernon, Vermont, and we'll have a 12 noon action at the gates of Vermont Yankee. Moving on, we'll jump back to Ken Schneck, uh, who was heavily involved in the concrete quilt for his part played in Go Skateboarding Day. National Go Skateboarding Day was last Thursday. My uh, often co-captain Joe Bushy, along with his running mate Daryl Pillsbury, were out for a special edition of The Pulse that'll show next week on BCTV Channel 8. Uh, among the many community members they caught up with was uh, select board member Ken Schneck. Let's take a look. I'm a big proponent of youth and activities for youth, and I think this is the place to put a skateboard park. We need a skateboard park. These are folks, I mean, look at this, and still early. There are folks who need a place to go, and if there's something that I can do for the town to support a place for youth to go to actually exert energy, 100% for it. And we'll move on uh, by talking, uh, jumping out into nature. We'll go back to my close-up for this. Plans are officially in the works to connect the Appalachian Trail to the North Country Trail uh, by way of Vermont's Long Trail. Lots of, lots of trails in that sentence. That would mean you could walk straight through from Georgia to North Dakota if you were just a tiny bit crazy and, of course, love the outdoors. The missing 40-mile section between the North Country and Long Trail will likely fall in an area of farmland in Addison County, Vermont. Still, there'll be plenty of hiking through red tape. <laughs> Great, great line. Hiking through red tape. Or so says Susan Shea, uh, the Director of Conservation for Vermont's Green Mountain Club. Uh, she caught up with members of Channel 17 in Burlington, the Peg Access Station up there, to talk a little bit more about what it's going to take to realize this next phase in the Long Trail's uh, history. Once we reach an agreement, then we um, sign a contract. We prepare a contract for, for the landowner to sign. And sometimes we have to do a survey. If we are splitting off land, we always have to do a survey. Uh -huh. So that, that takes a while, and we have to hire a, a surveyor. And then we um, 
hire an attorney to do the title search and, and help us with the closing. And obviously we have to have funding. That's pretty important. Well, we'll see if that uh, 40 mile section does connect and uh, you can head down to Georgia to walk on over to North Dakota from there should that uh, connection be made between the Long Trail and the North Country Trail. All right, just a few more things before we wrap up. We've been known to do a little traffic and weather stuff ourselves. And of course, uh, we've got quite uh, a heat wave on our hands. In fact, I'm thinking that I might even still have uh, our last heat wave uh, image here if we go back into the newsroom for a second just because I love things over my shoulder see if I can get that uh, heat wave piece up here there it is well that's basically all I got to say the heat is back uh, but we will take a, a quick look at uh, some of the the images coming over the radar we'll take a look at that as well um, we'll jump into that uh, piece of our show you can see uh, zoom in here that across the nation there could be record highs um, as we take a look at that, uh, jump on in over to uh, the radar here as we look at just a little bit of rain coming down uh, in uh, a little bit. And uh, we've got, of course, very high temperatures. They're going to get back to somewhat normal Monday, Tuesday. That's our somewhat low-tech weather report. And uh, as we often do traffic, um, we've been known to get the little grid up for downtown. But uh, for a little bit more regional action, a little more reasonable news content, um, we've partnered up with Orca Media, the pub peg access station out of Montpelier, who's now running a uh, half-hour program on uh, statewide traffic updates. Um, a lot of it uh, in lieu of Irene and all of the uh, changes that have been continued to be made across the state. But we've uh, clipped some of the relevant sections here to... Uh, us down in the southern part of the state. Let's take a look. Interstate 91, the roadway is reduced to one lane, and this is one of two spots where they're working on the bridge on 91 in the southern part of the state. That said, we're going to drop down to Brattleboro one more time on Interstate 91. In both directions this time, we've got bridge maintenance operations going on. Roadway is reduced to one lane now. The key here is speed limits are uh, reduced and the fine is double. All right, just a few more things before we wrap up, and I let you get off to the weekend, which I'm particularly excited for as well. Uh, but let's look at what's going on on this weekend edition of 545 Live. The CineSlam LGBT Short Film Festival kicks off tomorrow at 6.15 p.m. at the Hooker Dunham and the Orchestra Circus Gypsy-style event in a tent, which is awfully fun to say. Uh, Music New England event runs noon to 6 at the Femillary Farm in Brattleboro. Well, that's uh, about all I got for today. I'm going to head out and enjoy the weekend. Uh, try and cool down out there. Hopefully all of y'all can stay cool out there as well. Um, in the meantime, I'll sign off here by saying thanks to everybody that makes 545 Live uh, tick the way it does, in particular Vlasta Papelka and Nolan Edgar, who uh, hang around the BCTV office quite a lot to make sure I stay on track. Nancy Stefanik, who uh, has been putting in overtime here on the show for us, uh, working on scripts, videos, and the like. And of course, Catherine Turnis, who uh, helps out any way she can. She did all that concrete quilt footage. Thanks, all of you. And viewers, you're the ones that uh, make this show worth producing. We sure owe you a lot as well. In the meantime, for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden, and uh, I will sign off for the weekend. Night, everybody. We're gonna be free, peacefully, and Renewable.